Are you ready for a shocking revelation? Here it is. The best way to improve mid bass is by using your subwoofer. For real. And I'll show you what I mean in this video. Before I get too far into this video, I want to state a couple things up front. First off, I know some of you will say that anything I put in this video is not going to help you. And that's fine, but I can assure you that the overwhelming majority of people in car audio trying to solve their mid-bass issues are running into the same issues that I'm going to discuss in this video. Secondly, my car isn't perfect. I've got my own set of issues thanks to the install locations, which I've chosen on purpose. But again, this isn't me trying to act like I know everything. There certainly is not a one size fits all solution in car audio, but with so many overlapping similarities to the issues that we have, hopefully you can apply some of this logic to your benefit. So let's get started. Let's start off with the one main issue in car audio that everyone faces, what I call the near side null. And it's called the near side null because it's the nearest side to you. This is a null in the response in the mid bass region, approximately between 70 to 90 Hertz, depending on the exact location of your mid bass placement. It doesn't matter if you have mid bass in the doors or in the kicks, you're still going to have this issue. And this is caused by the physical dimensions of your vehicle relative to both your seated position and the location of the mid bass driver. In my testing, which I'll show in a second, I found that the width of the car is primarily the cause here. And I determined this simply by opening up the passenger side car door. But that was also after I tried a few other things like opening the hatch and also moving the mic around to different locations in the car. Now, unfortunately, we can't drive around with our passenger side doors open. So we really are limited to how we fix these kind of issues. And this isn't something you can fix with EQ either. Let's say you have a dip in response at 80 Hertz. That's about 10 dB low. If you put 10 dB at this dip, you're most likely not going to get 10 dB rise in response. What you're going to wind up with is maybe 1 dB for the 10 dB EQ that you put into it, meaning that all that power, is acoustically nullified, but mechanically that speaker is still getting all of that EQ power. Now what that means in the long term is that you're more likely to drive that woofer to failure and create more problems than you had to begin with. Now aside from what causes it, what does it sound like? Well in my experience, what that tends to sound like is a location pull right to that speaker. So let's say you're sitting in, in my car for example, and I've got that issue at around 80 Hertz. If you play a track with a bass guitar in it that has a chord at 80 Hertz, what's going to happen is the sound is going to localize right to that speaker. And that's not a good thing. And that also goes against some of the common thought in car audio where we try to cross our mid basses really low to get that up front bass. Well, if you do that, and you cross your mid bass into a region below where that null is, what you're going to wind up doing is localizing that null to that mid bass location. And in my experience, it also creates the effect of having the bass actually shift behind you, whether you have a subwoofer in the rear or not. So some of you may say, well, then what's the point? You know, is there even a benefit to crossing the mid bass low? And my response to most of you would be, Probably not, because the majority of the time that you cross your mid bass really low, you actually make the bass response worse and you break the illusion of having that again up front bass. So you're left with basically three options in the car to fix this kind of issue. The first one is to move the mid bass to a location where you don't have this issue. But there the problem is that most of us don't want a mid bass hanging from our roof right next to our head. You know, we're limited by the location in our, in our factory systems, such as the, the door location. 
The second option is go with distributed mid-bass or arrayed mid-bass. Now this is something very similar to what they do in home audio with subwoofers. But for car audio, the idea is that you would have a mid-bass for the left side on the left door panel and then maybe on the uh, or the left front door panel and then the left rear door panel or even in the rear shelf. And that would help what we call array the sound. And then the same thing for the right side. And the idea there is that by distributing the mid bass, you distribute those nulls and those modes, those cancellation modes uh, and peaks as well. And you, you result in a smoother response overall. But the problem there is that requires more speakers and more amplification. And you'll also probably need your own DSP channels as well, because you'll want to individually time align those speakers that are placed in different locations to arrive at the same point in time as your speakers that are in front of you at different locations. Aside from that, you would also want to low pass those speakers so they play a very limited bandwidth, because otherwise if you have 200 Hertz playing behind you, you will be able to tell that difference depending on the level. You know, if it's really, really low in level, then it won't matter so much. But then if it's really, really low in level, it's also not going to help counteract the mode that's up front. So there's kind of a trade off there. The third option is to use the subwoofer to blend in and fill in that, that node or that null that you have an issue with. I use the latter approach, which is to use a subwoofer to fill in that null. Now, again, I know this is something that may seem contrary to typical use. And, and you would be thinking, well, if you're going to raise a subwoofer to 80 Hertz and it's behind you, are you not going to hear the subwoofer notes playing behind you? The answer is assuming that you have a good location for your subwoofer, then no. And matter of fact, what happens is if you use the subwoofer to fill in that 80 Hertz localization that's up front on your, on your driver's side door or on your driver's side kick panel, you will actually guide the center uh, or of the, of the base, you will guide the base back to the center of the car. I know that seems counterintuitive, but those of you who have tuned a lot will, will know exactly where I'm coming from here. So then you say, okay, well, if I can just use my subwoofer, I'll run it up to 80 hertz or 100 hertz or, or whatever, and I'll fill in that null and I'll be good to go, right? Well, unfortunately, it's not that simple either because subwoofers have their own issues. For example, the length of the car also will dictate where a null is placed in the subwoofer response. And in my car, there's a null right at 60 hertz, and it drives me insane, right? But I will cross it around 80s to help fill in the mid bass null because I would rather it fill in that null than to cross it too low and not have any help there. Because no matter what, my sub is gonna to play to at least 60 hertz or so. I'm gonna have a null at 60 hertz on the, on the subwoofer anyway. I might as well let it extend a little bit higher and fill in the null on the near side mid bass. So then the best thing you can do here is if you're in the middle of design or if you just have some extra time and you have the space in your vehicle to move the subwoofer around, is to do that. Play with different subwoofer locations. Start off with the primary position where you would have it. For example, I'm going to move it out of the way. My car subwoofer is placed right near the back seat and um, yeah, in the center of the, of the trunk area or the hatch area. And I specifically chose that area because I wanted to show off the work from Steve Cook at Audio X. I'm, I'm giving him a plug because he did this incredible work. And for years, I wanted a car install that had like a really cool looking trunk, one that was worthy of of showing off so I asked him to do all this crazy stuff and this is where the subwoofer went. Now part of my research into this car was trying to determine you know what makes sense for the for the subwoofer placement and in my case moving the subwoofer around from side to side so from here to here or even on the driver's side doesn't make a lot of difference until you get above about 100 hertz so to fill in that 60 hertz null there's not a lot of benefit moving the sub around. But in other cars, and in fact, even my old car, if I had moved the subwoofer somewhere else than where it was, then the 60 hertz null or the null that may appear in wherever in your car from the subwoofer response would actually shift. Now it's not gonna go away. It's never gonna go away entirely. What's gonna happen is it's just gonna shift in frequency. So it may go from 60 hertz to 70 hertz or 80 hertz or something like that. But Hopefully it will shift enough to allow you some freedom to still use the subwoofer and implement it without having negative effect of it pulling to the subwoofer at a different note. So hopefully that isn't all confusing and I'm going to try to recap this really quickly. The logic here is 
you use the subwoofer to fill in the mid bass null up front, you're always going to have a null somewhere in your subwoofer's response, but hopefully by playing around with location, you can shift that null to an area that isn't offensive. With all of that explanation given, what can you do now? Well, you can use your RTA system to measure your subwoofer response to find the ideal placement. Now, the good thing about subwoofer frequencies is that they're so long relative to the space that you would be inside of your car that you can pretty much ignore all the aspects of spatial averaging, which is to move the mic around or to move the mic here and here and, and then take an average of all the measurements. Because let's say, for example, a 200 hertz wavelength is about five and a half feet long. Even at a quarter of that, you're still at about one and a half feet. So at 200 hertz, if you're in a standard listening position in a car for a single seat, your head isn't going to move more than one and a half feet, right? So you can just place the mic at the center of your headrest. You can squish it down with the headrest in place and then walk away. You don't have to sit in the car and do all this stuff and move it around. You don't have to use my moving mic measurement method that I posted a video for previously. You don't have to do any of that for subwoofer response. But again, I want to make sure that this is clear. That only applies to low frequencies and typically in the car that's below about 300 hertz or so. Now for the same reasons as not having to take a spatial average or anything of that nature, you can also place the subwoofer at your seated location and then go to the trunk and move the mic around. I didn't do that in this video or for this video because it's actually harder on me to move my subwoofer to the front of my car than it is for me just to slide it around in the backseat area. But note that you can do that. For my RTA purposes, I used a laptop and Room EQ Wizard, REW, and I put my microphone at the headrest and kind of squished it down into place to hold it there. And then I started doing some measurements using pseudo pink noise via REW. And then I got the measurements that we're about to discuss. So I'm about to switch formats into the screen view of my results and I'll walk you through some of what I've got and tell you what my thoughts are on it. The first thing I want to discuss is what I mentioned previously about not needing to do a moving measurement or a moving microphone measurement or an average of any sort when you're measuring subwoofer frequencies. To prove that out to you, here's an example. This red line represents a moving measurement that I used to measure the system response in my car. So this was the microphone in the car attached to my fan rig that I made a video of where it moves the microphone back and forth plus or minus 45 degrees and measures while it's sweeping that headspace. This green line is the microphone at a stationary position pointed toward the front of the vehicle in the same area, but again, just not moving, right? And you can see that above about 400 hertz is where you start to get more deviation. And then once you get above 800 hertz or so, you start to get even greater deviation, but a below, you know, four or 300 Hertz, the response is basically the same. So that vets out what I mentioned earlier about being able to put the microphone in one spot, not worrying about an average or moving the microphone around to get the subwoofer response. Now I want to show you the left mid bass near side null. And that is around the 70 to mid 80 hertz region and it starts rolling off even before and after that this null is a problem in every single car unless you have some really unique system installed and by unique i mean you don't have a left mid base anywhere in the vicinity of the kick panel or the door speaker to see what was causing that, I tried a few things. Ultimately, what I wound up discovering was that it was the width of the car, and I determined that by simply opening up the passenger side door, which you can see the result from here. So by opening up the passenger side door, I went from a dip like this to a response that fills in that dip. Now there are other issues going on, but specifically I was concerned about the 80 hertz or so region here. Knowing what we know about the left mid base or the near side null from the mid base, let's go further into discussing what happens when you introduce the subwoofer. Now what you're seeing right now is the left mid base only, and now the green line represents the subwoofer response only. This is raw subwoofer response, no crossovers, no EQ, nothing like that, no DSP applied at all. 
you can see here that where the left mid base had a null, the subwoofer fills in that null quite nicely. That's a good thing. Now let's take the left mid base away. You'll notice the subwoofer has a dip in response at about 62 hertz. So I'm just going to round that down to 60 hertz. What I want to do is move the subwoofer around and see does the response change and especially does this null go away. Now a few things that I tried, for example, was to take the subwoofer from the original center position located near the back seat and move it to the right side behind the back seat. And when I do that, the null is still there, but there's some improvement above that null. So that's about maybe two or three dB, maybe a little bit less. And now what happens if I take the subwoofer position on the right side of the hatch and I move it back to the hatch wall. So no longer is it behind the seat. It's actually at the, at the very back of the car, right next to the hatch itself. You still see the null is there. The null is not so bad anymore. And the response above that null has actually improved a good bit as well. Now, if I turn the subwoofer to the side, so no longer is it facing the back of the hatch, it's facing the side of the car. It's at the same location at the back of the car, but it's facing the side. The response here is roughly the same, but you'll notice that it actually dips above about 160 hertz. Now I tried a lot of different things here. Ultimately what I wound up discovering was something very similar to what I discovered when I played around in trucks and, and trying to move a subwoofer in trucks. And that is if the subwoofer is placed on the same side as the main listening position, the response tends to be worse than if you were to move it to the opposite side. So the passenger side. If the subwoofer is on the passenger side of the car, the response actually seems to be better. And I can show you an example of that. So this is the subwoofer placed on the left, but facing the side. And this is the subwoofer on the right, but facing the side. You can see how well the response fills in above 80 Hertz with the subwoofer positioned on the right side, the passenger side of the vehicle. So that's something you guys may want to keep in mind when you're moving subwoofers around or, or doing an install. I see a lot of trucks that have installations where the rear seats are removed and there's a amp wall behind it. I would take some time and see if what I'm finding here is true in your vehicle where the subwoofer will be better placed at the passenger side. Food for thought, okay? Now, unfortunately, the subwoofer null never fills in no matter what I do. It is what it is. I can't really move it anywhere else in the car, in the hatch area. I mean, short of moving it to the firewall or something, I really don't see this particular null going away. But what I have found is, yes, indeed, moving it to the right side of the vehicle in the hatch area actually gives me better performance. I'm not going to do that because I like personally where the subwoofer is right now. But if I were to redesign the trunk at a later point in time or maybe change subwoofers or something, I would probably go ahead and try to move the subwoofer to the right side. And in my listening evaluations, what I'm seeing in my data lines up very well. The response, even though there still is this null here, the base up front is better with the subwoofer placed on the right side. And it's due to this, even with a steep slope of 48 dB per octave placed at 80 Hertz. And that's all I've got for my measurement portion. So let's bell out of here and go back to looking at my beautiful face and I'll wrap this thing up. Hopefully you've been able to use this information to help you improve the system response in your car. If you are already subscribed to this page, thank you. If you are not and you're interested in getting notifications for future videos of this nature, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click the notification so it will alert you when I post new videos. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys stay safe out there. Peace.